Hey, if you've played this video, you either one really love John Krasinski and The Office and fell into this clickbait, or two, you are just a really good student. Congrats. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it to this recording, so we're going to tweak it up a little. But today, we've got some good math. Yes, I said it. The most common phrase a math teacher hears is, when are we going to use this in real life? Well, I will show you all the different ways conics are seen and used in the world we live in today. Um, I'm going to be summarizing the slides, making comments, and or telling little stories. You can always pause this video if you just want to read the slide without hearing my voice. It's totally fine. Uh, so this slide right here shows you how you can get all four of the conics by slicing this figure in their different sections. All right, this one talks about how any circle can appear to be an ellipse um, depending on the angle you're viewing it at. This reminds me, you know those carnival games in general where they're always somehow rigged and you lose a bunch of money trying to get a stuffed animal? That would probably be cheaper if you would just buy it at the store. Uh, well, I'm not sure if this game is really played anymore, but there was this basketball game where you would try to make baskets around the world and for some reason it'd be extremely hard to get it in uh why uh you know we could just be bad or have you ever wondered if the hoop is actually an ellipse i'm not saying that this is an excuse but i'm just saying you know if you find yourself at this game and you consider yourself to be a hotshot basketball player and you can't make it in, um, I would just walk under the rim and just kind of see. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a super cool building. Yes. All right. When you tilt water, you uh, will see the elliptical outline and salami is often cut in elliptical slices okay i mean i feel like in general chefs like cutting things into elliptical slices it's more appealing to the eyes okay we have science yes we all know this and then uh, we have science is super super magnified and then this, uh, the ellipse has an important property that is used in the reflection of light and sound waves. Any light or signal that starts at one focus will be reflected to the other focus. Okay, noted. Uh, this right here, I actually uh, YouTubed this up, this procedure. It's kind of cool. Um, but what I get from this slide is, let's not get kidney stones. Um, drink lots of water, lower your sodium or sugar intake. It's probably more complicated than this, but for now, just hydrate yourself. All right, this is uh, what we were talking about two slides ago, the whispering galleries. So pretty much if you're in an elliptical building, uh, just like St. Paul's Cathedral in London, if you stand out um, near one focus and your friend stands near the other one, you can basically hear each other, so that's pretty cool. And this was also uh, seen in real life, in history, um, with the Statuary Hall in the U.S. Capitol building. First off, it's an elliptical building, and John Quincy Adams basically put his desk at the focal point of the elliptical ceiling, and he was able to ease, eavesdrop um, on his other house members that were located near the other focal point. So that's pretty cool. Uh, right here, if you ever come across an elliptical pool table, you can test this out, and then you can tell me. Um, but basically, if you place two pool balls at the focal points of the elliptical table, if you use the stick to shoot the ball and it hits the edge, it should rebound and hit the other ball eventually, just like the picture that we saw three slides ago. Yeah. Okay, and then parabolas. Um, the best known approximation to the parabola is just a trajectory. Like We've seen it. Even if you haven't seen it, you've seen it. Uh, imagine you are in your respective sport, basketball, baseball, tennis, and the ball is coming towards you and you miss the pass. 
Yes, we've seen it before. Um, well, the ball is bouncing away now uh, in this parabolic trajectory. And it's actually even more awkward when, like, you don't get the ball after it's bounced a couple of times and now the ball's rolling and now you're just chasing after a rolling ball. Yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen to you in the future. Okay, so Galileo used this to shoot cannonballs. And then we have these marine mammals just kind of nicely jumping out of the water. It's kind of soothing. And then we have water coming out of a water fountain. But I'm pretty sure when you're drinking out of a water fountain, this probably isn't one of the thoughts that you think about. But you know what it does tie back into? Hydrating yourself so you don't get kidney stones. Okay, um, this one's actually really cool. Uh, so basically, let's say you have a parabolic mirror and you put a light where the focal point is. The light's going to emit um, the, its rays and it's going to bounce off of the uh, mirror and it's going to be reflected in a parallel direction in relation to the axis. That's pretty cool. So scientists have actually used this to um, their advantage and they've used the opposite principle. So instead of kind of casting light from the inside out, what they're going to do is they're going to take light or radio waves from outer space and they're going to bring it in. So the light waves come in just like this. Hits the parabolic dish and we know because of a property that it's eventually going to go to the focal point right here. And then that's where like your transmitter is or whatnot bringing in the information. Same thing goes with heat waves. So basically any kind of wave. Heat, light, sound, yeah. Okay. All right, uh, a hyperbola. I think they just wanted to show you an image. This was the original one. This uh, kind of cartoon lampshade. Uh, I couldn't really visualize it, so I found this one off of Google. And wow, look, there's a hyperbola right there and right there. It's pretty nice. Oh, okay. Um, and then, yes, we have this. You can read this. And then a hyperbola revolving around its axis forms a surface called a hyperboloid. That is seen right here. Okay, um, I'm going to let you read this one. And if it really interests you, you can Google this up. Yeah, looks nice. Looks like an optical illusion. Looks complicated. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've made it to the end. Remember, this is just a recap of uh, the examples that we've talked about. We got the ellipse applications, the parabola applications, and the hyperbola applications. That's it. We finished. Thanks for tuning in.